I love coming to a great big natural water like this. We're at Staunton Harold today and fishing the pole. There's something about sitting out in the water, whether you're in waders or in flip-flops like I am today, because it's red hot, and catching fish, which in the grand scheme of things is really in the margins of a great big place like this. It's really rewarding and you can be really attacking with your fishing. When you come for a day's pole fishing on a great big place like this, there's a few essential bits of tackle that will make your life a lot easier and catch you a lot more fish. First one, and probably the most important one, is a good platform. You want to wade out a fair way, just so you're fishing that bit further out into the reservoir. You know, if I was to sit right here on the shoreline and fish 11 or 13 metres out, it would probably only be two or three foot deep, which is going to be no good. So, good sturdy platform, get you out into the reservoir that little bit further. Another good bit of tackle to bring with you is a real solid pole roost to keep your top kits out of the water because otherwise they just float off. Another really essential bit of kit for me when fishing a big place like this is a bump bar for your pole. They can get really windy out of absolutely nowhere. Like today when we're setting up it's flat calm, it's got a little ripple on now. It might be gales soon, you just don't know on big places like this. And as well as your normal side tray setup, so you've got everything to hand, you don't want to be clambering out the water because it's going to spook the fish and waste time. When it comes to deciding where to fish and where to fish in your peg, there's a few things you need to consider. Where you actually put your box on a pleasure session, like we are today, because I'm looking to fish on the pole, I know I need to fish somewhere with a bit of depth in the water, so there's no point pitching up in a corner where it's about two foot deep all the way over. You're not going to catch a lot there because the pole's going to spook the fish over the fish's head. So look to pick somewhere with a bit of depth and a nice flat bottom in my experience. You want to avoid the bits of the reservoir and lakes that are really light, humpty and bumpty, really rocky. You want to avoid them in my experience. Look for somewhere it's just a nice gradual slope very rare on a venue like this that it will be flat as in the same depth for sort of three or four meters because normally they're just sloping away from you all the time but somewhere that's a nice gradual slope is normally quite good areas for pole fishing today we've got about five to six foot of depth that's quite good depth for roach it's not too deep that they come way up off the bottom but also it's not too shallow that you don't catch any fish so that's normally a good general depth to aim for if you're looking to catch roach if you're looking to catch skimmers and bream I'm not too sure what the score is here to be honest, I've never been here once before and I've fished a feeder all day so I don't know if there's deeper areas of the reservoir or not but other places I've fished such as Bow Beach and Porth Reservoir down in Cornwall, the deeper pegs are normally better for skimmers and bream on the pole simply because there's more depth close in. For a nice general day catching a bit of everything, five to six foot is a great depth to start at. Definitely don't be afraid to ask for a bit of local knowledge. Whether you ring someone up, whether it's the bailiff or the match organiser, or research it on Facebook or other social media bits and bobs, there's no point wasting a day, a, your time and all the money you're going to spend on bait. Ask someone where's best to sit and I'm sure someone will be helpful enough to put you in the right direction. For me, ground bait is a super important part of your armoury when you come to a massive water like this because you can make a lot of noise with it and also in the ground bait there should be a lot of attraction as well. The mix I normally use is one bag of Mainline Proactive and a bag of Vandenheim Black Turbo and they each play an important role in the mix. The Black Turbo is a very sticky dark ground bait as the name suggests so when you looking to throw in balls regularly, which is a great tactic somewhere like this. You can make them with one hand, with one squeeze, and get a nice hard ball to go to the bottom with no cloud, which I'll go into that later, that's the way I sort of like the fish. And the proactive, as the name suggests, adds a bit of activity to the mix, a bit of attraction. So you've got the best of both worlds. You've got a ground bait that's very binding, so you can carry a lot of food and particles in your ground bait, and also you've got an active mix, which will help attract the fish. To kick the session off, I always like to introduce quite a large amount of ground bait. Sort of six to ten balls is normally about right, I find. 
How hard you squeeze them, to me, depends on how deep the peg is and how much the water's towing. Like today, it's quite shallow, it's about five and a half foot deep, and at the minute, it's not really towing. So I put them in quite soft to sort of create a bit of a cloud and to draw the fish in and spread the bait over quite an area. Whereas if it was a really windy day and the water was really towing a lot, I'd put the bait in quite hard so I knew where it was and so I could pin the fish to the bottom where they'd be easier to catch in the tow. How much you put in that ground bait at the start of a session is up to you, but what I normally like to do is feed a bit of a combination of bait. So I've got a few different choices what to put on the hook and also to hopefully attract a few different sort of fish in the swim. I normally put in about 250 mil of hemp, the same of casters, and also about 125 mil of chopped worms. I like to include worms in the mix, even though they may not be a real well-known roach bait, like we'll probably catch more roach today from what we've heard, but if you put worms in your mix, what it does allow you to do is slip a worm head on the hook, which is a great bait for bigger fish and also catching a lot of fish at speed because you don't have to change it very often. So I'll stick to those three simple baits in your ground bait and you can't really go too far wrong. One extra thing worth noting is I always like to ball it in, throw your ground bait in at the start of the session to create a lot of noise and to drag the fish into your swim. They're probably not going to be sat 11 or 13 metres out, they're probably going to be quite a way out in the reservoir, so you need to draw them in. Some people have the argument that balling in bait attracts pike, and it might well do some days, but that's just the nature of the beast. I'd rather create a lot of noise, drawing a lot of small fish, and if you get the odd pike, that's just the way it goes. The nature of these sorts of venues is that the fish aren't in front of you all day on the pole, that because of the depth of water and just the sheer size of the place, it often takes a while for them to come into your pole line. You might clatter them for a bit, then they just swim off. It's not as if you're fishing for wary fish on a narrow canal that sort of live in the area. I think the fish just swim about in big shoals, they come and eat, and then they go off and eat somewhere else, simple as that. But because they're not often on you all day, only for short bursts, your rigs have to be very positive in my eyes to get the best out of your swim in the situation. So I normally like to set up two different types of rig, a strung out rig and a bulk down rig. The strung out rig is still very positive with quite big shot. Like today, I've got a 0.75 gram float on, even though it's only sort of five and a half foot deep with number nine shot just strung out and tapered up into a little bulk. But it will still get your hook bait to the bottom quite quickly, but give it a bit of a slower fall and allow you to catch fish really nicely when you're loose feeding in particular, that rig is good. And then the bulk down rig, I like to have real positive droppers on it, number eights or nines at the very smallest, just with a Olivet about 30 to 40 centimetres from the hook, a couple of number eight droppers in between, gram and a half float I've got on this today because even though it looks calm now, I've been so many places like this before where you set up and it's flat calm and it gets a bit of a ripple and by the time the match starts you can hardly hold your pole so I always like to err on the side of heavier as in weight rise for your rigs on venues like this because you never know what the conditions are going to pop up. Likewise with the rigs your elastic also has to be very positive in my eyes I like to use either a yellow or a pink hydro both are nice and soft on the strike so the fish don't splash on the top and spook the rest of the shoal but still because it's got a, a reasonable diameter to it, you can swing in some sort of decent sized fish. Also your hooks, I like to use quite big hooks, either an 18 or a 16 pole special hook I like to go with, and I actually use one of our ready rigs. I couldn't tie them better myself, they're, they're just right in my eyes. They're eight inches long, which I find a great length for when you're fishing somewhere like this. It's a nice compromise if you want a bit of a free falling bait, you've got that extra length. And also, if you're laying a bit of line on the bottom, you've got that extra length, so your shot's off the bottom as well. So, real positive rigs for when the fish are on you, so you can really maximise your time in the water. Feeding-wise, throughout the day, to keep your swim ticking over, there's a few ways you can go about it. You either loose feed and bait, that being hemp and casters, mainly casters with a bit of hemp I like to use, sort of about three quarters casters, or, you're feeding small balls of ground bait with quite a bit of bait packed in them, whether that be cupping them in if it's really windy and you can't be accurate, or throwing them in because you want to make a bit of noise. In general, if it's really calm, loose feeding is king. Also though, plopping in a 
a regular ball of soft ground bait can be really good, especially for skimmers on a nice calm day or a real windy day, you've often got no choice but to either throw in ground bait or cup it in just because your loose feed will go everywhere. So your top up feed is really conditions dependent and also species dependent, depending on what you've got in front of you. But it's a general rule, if it's really windy, plopping in those hard balls of ground bait is good or if it's quite calm, loose feeding is really good. Rig presentation wise, there's a couple of different things that you can do with your couple of different rigs that will definitely help you catch more fish throughout the day. So when you're loose feeding bait, with that strung out rig, I find it best to flick your rig right past your pole tip. Make sure you don't have too short a line between your pole tip and your float. You know, you're not fishing pellets on a commercial, so have a nice long line, three to four foot even isn't, isn't too long, because it allow you to fish at the back edge of your bait, which will normally catch those bigger fish, especially roach, definitely hang off the, the bigger roach definitely hang off the back edge of the bait. So flicking your rig all the way around your loose fed area is a great way to catch those extra fish and just keep ticking over. Also lie in on a tight line and by that I mean flick it out and make sure the line between your pole tip and your pole float is tight so your, your shots will register nice and you'll be really quick to react to any bite. That will definitely catch you a lot more fish. Because with that bolt down rig you'll be fishing in conjunction with balls of ground bait, cupping them in or throwing them in. I find it you best to line up with your far bank marker as you always do and put your Olivet or Bulker shot right in that far bank marker and then put your float straight on top of it so you're fishing really quick, you're fishing accurately and you're fishing over that main little hub of bait where all your fish should be waiting for you.